Hi guys! In today's video we'll be doing this glittery flexible mermaid tail. For this one I went for a slightly thinner looking tail than the previous one and I imagine this going to quite of a, a forest mermaid living in a lake in a forest or something like that so I wanted it to be green to fit the theme. I made my tail for this second hand monster hide hole but you can use whatever doll you want. To make the pattern for a tail, I'll be using kitchen film and tape, starting by taping the joints of the doll's legs together just so they stay at a fixed point while we do the pattern. And then you're going to cover the bottom part of the doll, the entire tail part, with the kitchen film and then with the tape on top of that. Once you have it all covered, you want to draw a line down the side, so that's kind of like the side seam, and also define the top, what it you want that to be, and then you can cut the pattern away from the doll. Now you can trace the pattern pieces onto paper. I added a bit of extra around the sides of the back piece just so they could overlap. And for those of you who are allergic to latex, which I'll be making the tail from, you can just use this way to make a pattern for then sewing a fabric tail. For the bottom of the tail, I extended it further than the actual feet of the doll in order to get a slightly slimmer look, but also to be able to flip the tail fin over and kind of pose it that way. Then draw out the bottom tail fin. I also made two smaller sets of fins to go on the side. Then you want to take your pieces and protect them inside plastic folders or smooth plastic bags. And this is so we can actually pour latex on top of them. Next to your glitter, I made this dark glitter mix for the actual body of the tail and used this lighter one for the fin. Now get your latex. I got this liquid latex at my local craft store. Now you want to carefully spread the latex onto the plastic folder on top of our pattern, making sure you cover the pattern piece completely. I use a silicone sculpting tool because it's easy to clean from the latex afterwards, and then I just kind of dab it on. It tends to pull a little bit, but just keep working it until you get it to fill out the area that you need. Once 
after it's completely covered, you want to sprinkle the glitter on top, making sure you have a very opaque layer so it's completely covered. Repeat the process for the other piece and also the tail fin pieces. Don't worry if you can't get the points of the fins to get really sharp, because once it's all dry we can just cut that excess away. Now you want to let all the pieces dry. Once dry, tip off the excess glitter and then you want to cover the entire piece again in another layer of latex. This both acts to add thickness to the tail to make it more durable, but it also seals in the glitter so it doesn't shed everywhere. And you want to do this for all your pieces and then let everything dry once again. Once the latex had dried all clear, I took a green alcohol marker and used this to define the fins just a little bit because it's so transparent. And for the tail fin, I tried to go in almost like a leaf-like pattern on top, just to go with the forest theme. Next up, you want to use talcum powder and use this to powder all the surfaces of the tail, both the front and back. And this is to avoid the latex sticking to itself right away because it does tend to have a sticky surface and once two pieces of raw latex kind of flop together, separating the two is nearly impossible, so make sure you powder it. Once powdered, you can also cut away any excess around the pieces.
I can use some more latex to adhere the front and back of the body of the tail onto the tail fin. Now you want to start wrapping it around the doll. Even powdered, the latex can be pushed to adhere to itself. So I fold the back piece up around the doll and then the front piece over that. So the two can slightly stick to each other just in the beginning until we have the whole shape going. And then afterwards we can seal it with more latex. So just go gently, making sure that you match up the curves of the tail onto the curves of the body. And then go on until it's all closed. Then you want to stick the pieces properly together by going over the seam with more latex. Then you want to add on the side fins. Once that's dry, you want to go over everything that had yet to be powdered and powder it so we're sure that it won't stick to itself. And here we are! There's our finished flexible tail. If you haven't seen my previous mermaid, which was fire inspired as a fire element, be sure to check that out on my channel. Thank you so much for watching! Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in a new one soon! Bye!